So today sees the launch of the fourth generation Ryzen processors, or the 5000 series, just to confuse you that little bit. And we want to see if what Lisa Su says in terms of how impressive they are, well, we want to see if that's actually true. So we tested two of them. Let's do this. Never worry about Wi-Fi again. With the fastest Wi-Fi ever and four times the connection capacity so you can connect more, do more, and stream more simultaneously. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear. So straight off the bat, let's have a little bit of a recap before we delve into things. So we all remember the live stream where we saw four CPUs being shown in total with the 5600X, 5800X, 5900X, and the 5950X. Well, we've got the 5600X and 5900X here today at the time of filming, but we have got the other two coming on release day, so definitely watch out for that. So in short, the 5600X is a six core 12 thread CPU, boosting up to 4.6 gigahertz and has a 65 watt TV peak. So in comparison to the 3600X, it's 200 megahertz faster and should in theory run a little cooler as the 3600X had a 95 watt TDP. The 5900X, however, is a 12 core 24 thread beast with a boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz and a 105 watt TDP. So 20 watts below the Intel equivalent and in comparison to the 3900X, it's 200 megahertz faster on the boost and only 100 megahertz faster than the 3900XT's boost clock. So there has to be more at play than just speeds, right? Well, of course there is. So we saw benchmarks of the 5600X being 1.8 times better than its counterpart, the 3600XT, when 3D rendering with V-Ray. We then saw the 5900X performing 1.19 times better than the 3900XT. So how are they actually getting such huge gains without increasing that clock speed to stupidly high levels. Also showing rendering in DaVinci Resolve, which you may know we use for video editing, with the 5900X being 1.08 times better than the 3900 XT. Now, while this figure doesn't sound an incredible increase, when looking at businesses that are into video creation, these extra minutes shave through rendering can save a company quite a whack of money. And at the price of CPUs, they are definitely worth the cash. We then saw charts comparing the 5900X against the Intel i9-10900K across many different content creation applications. And it simply blew it out of the park. So yes, these CPUs are definitely efficient when it comes to content creation, but what we all really want to know is how it performs when gaming. So Intel have always been the king when it comes to gaming, sometimes seeing up to 30 frames per second over AMD. So basically what I'm trying to get at is AMD kind of had to go back to the drawing board. They had to think, how can we hit them where it matters, which is for the most part single core performance and then when it came to gaming. So they went back to the drawing board and came up with something just monumentous. So yeah, let's run them glorious benchmarks.
So let's talk a little bit about overclocking. Now with the 5600X, we were actually able to overclock this to 4.8 gigahertz at 1.3375 volts. Now we could actually go a little bit higher. I was able to boot at 4.9 gigahertz, but it did need more volts because of this. And I just felt that this wouldn't be something that you'd go for on a 24 seven based system. Moving over to the 5900X, we were able to overclock this to 4.6 gigahertz at quite a, a bit lower voltage, 1.2825 5 volts. Now again we could go a little bit higher but it wasn't fully stable and would need more volts. We actually got to 1.35 volts and still couldn't get stable at 4.7 gigahertz but it did boot. So straight away Lisa Sue was not telling any porky pies when it came to the performance. Especially during workload tests both the 5600X and the 5900X performed well pretty outstandingly. Even when it comes to gaming the results showed that AMD have definitely put their money where their mouth is. With the 5000 series coming out on top, of course Intel have made some ground on a couple of games, but especially when it gets paired with AMD's new GPUs, we may see even better performance when it comes to gaming. But this is something we will have to wait and see. The figures that we got from our own testing were there or thereabouts in line with what AMD showed us on their slideshow during the reveal. And that is a good sign for when we look at the GPUs coming out. I mean, if we see the same kind of increases on their GPU that we've seen here today on the CPUs, I think this is going to be an absolutely mind blowing time for anyone who's into PC gaming. It gives us just, well, choice. So with the 5600X priced at $299 or around £230 against Intel's Core i5-10600K sitting around 30 quid more, it looks like the new 5000 series is a bit better bang for your buck. AMD have definitely upped their game with these processors as expected. With the amount of effort they have simply put into the specs on these CPUs, they've not disappointed. You also have to remember that AMD currently are the only ones who have PCI Express Gen 4 support. While we know there were a few Z490 boards out there with the support, the processors, well, they're just not here yet. And apparently from what we've read, Intel aren't gonna be releasing these new processors until next year. Could it be a little bit too late? So let me know what you guys actually think about this. Have AMD finally done it? Have they cracked the gaming world? Have they kind of taken that crown away from Intel? I mean, there were still some very, very close results, but I'm intrigued to see what you guys actually think and about what processor you're currently using and what you're likely to upgrade to. Are you gonna be buying one of these chips? Are you gonna go for something with more cores? Do you really need that? Are you into workload kind of base tasks? Or are you all about sheer speed when it comes to gaming? So something like the 5600X. For me personally, I'm not actually interested too much in the 5600X or the 5900X or any of the other two CPUs that AMD announced. I know, shock horror, but the one I'm really looking forward to is the 5600. I know there's been no word about it whatsoever, but we can only assume that based on 3600, 2600, 1600, there is going to be a chip based around that, so a non-X part. And typically, they have always been the best value for money CPUs when you're talking what you actually get and how much you have to pay out for it. So I'm kind of intrigued as to what's what's going to be coming out in the near future and how things are going to get better and especially when we pair them with AMD GPUs which obviously uh, is coming up very very soon I think it's an exciting time to be a PC gamer let me know what you guys think hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one see you later guys